So because tefillah is always something which is good to do, and also uh, it seems to be a question that many of you are asking, I wanted to also learn a little bit about tefillah today. Um, Mid year I may need to move because this is my kid's uh, bedroom for uh, sukkahs, um, and they're going to bed soon. So um, I will vacate the sukkah and go inside. Uh, please, God, not losing Wi-Fi as I do it. Um, okay. So, all right. So you saw Dag Shavat. You uh, If you want to look on the screen, you can. If not, hey, um, whatever you want to do. All right. Yisod Akshava, the basis, the foundation of listening. Hayisod ham yotel amok biyachas el ha-Torah, hu yisod hanava v'akshava. We started talking about this last week. We started talking about this last week. Um, that we need hanava and we need hakshava. We need to listen. Shema Yisrael, right? We are called to listen. Am Yisrael ordered and required to listen to the Torah. Ota yidiya pnimit. We need human humility. We are a human society, and societies are built through having anava. So societies are destroyed through having the opposite. Where someone thinks he can just choose for others, that's the opposite of anava, and that's when society falls apart. Society comes together, and Jewish society definitely comes together when there is anava. Hayodat like shivli tibo eloki elenu, which knows to listen to God's speech. So, Alan, whether or not you need one or two sinks, it doesn't really matter right now. But what the important thing you said in that is, I do what the rabbis say, I do what the Torah says. So we need to understand that whether you need one or two sinks, that's for another discussion. But what's very um, important for what you said is. I do what the Torah says, and that's anava. Okay? Sometimes we don't know enough. Sometimes we need to learn more. But if we have the anava to say, I'll do what the Torah says, then when I learn what the Torah says, I'm going to be willing to put in a second sink if that's what's needed. Again, just go back to the two sinks. You don't have to have two sinks. It's better if you do. It's easier to keep uh, kashul. Oh, yeah. You actually have to have two sinks. Okay. Okay, mitzvot are not, don't receive their worth, I'm sorry, because we understand them. Rather, what makes them have worth is that it's God's ideals. His ideology has come together to make the Torah. And this truth has nothing to do with the question whether we understand the mitzvot or not. Even though, for many people who are Baal Tshuva, the first time they shake Lul of an Etrog, and for the rest of their life, they are freaked out by it. They will do it because the Torah says to do it, but it's a weird mitzvah. You're taking your Lulav, you're taking this lemon, which isn't a lemon, which is a citrus, and you're shaking it, and you look incredibly, incredibly weird doing it. And obviously, it's our job to try and understand it. We need to try and understand what the idealism of the, of the idea behind the lulav is. But even it's a hawk. It's something we're not understanding, we still need to do it. more or less. Alan, what? I thought it's a hawk. It's something we're not really supposed to understand until Mashiach comes. Oh, yeah, but even if we do understand yeah. it, even if we do understand, even if it's not a chok, meaning there's a chok which we can't understand, and there's a mishpat which we can understand, but we still don't understand. I heard it's like a, it's kind of like a rain dance to hopefully get more rain. No, is it, 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 there are lo, there are lo, lots of levels, but what I mean is, uh, Eitan, okay. you want to take that away? I know it's very interesting seeing your tuna, but. Um... <laughs> Sorry, I'm very hungry. I was making tuna. Enjoy tuna, enjoy, enjoy. Um, no, so Alan, all I'm saying is that is one of the reasons for it. But I'm talking about, let's say, Kibu um, Davim, respecting your parents. That is not a chok, that's a mishpat. We understand why. It makes sense to have to respect your parents. But even if I don't know the reasons yet for that, that's something I can understand, I just don't know yet. Still, if I understand that I accept the Torah because it was given by God, 
then I'm going to want to do it even if I don't understand it. Kalvachomer, for something which, no matter how hard I try and understand, it remains a chok, meaning, tefillin, no matter how long or how hard I try, I'm never going to be, un- uh, be able to understand it fully um, because there's so many levels, so many deeper levels. Zach, you want to tell the people who are with you that don't want to waste their data, that if you, they just do audio, it waste less data. If that's the reason they're not joining, uh, they're welcome to come, even just with, uh, with audio. But well, I'll, I'll let you tell them another time. Um, Everyone's on, Ralph. No audio. Everyone's on, man. Oh, really? Okay, wonderful. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Max is under an alias. He's alias. We, in some ways, are expected to be robots. Robots on a mission to do what our programming tells us to do. But then we move on to another stage, which we are nishma. We're trying to understand it. It's not supposed to be habitual. We're not supposed to get stuck in that stage of putting on to fill in because we're told to do at the age of 13 and we're doing it and doing it and doing it. That's Nasir. We're not supposed to get stuck there, but it's supposed to start from there. Start from the Anava, human humility of, we do what God wants us to do. Um, okay. Nishma Hanovea Menase. You want to say hi to the boys? Okay. Come and say hi to the boys before you go to bed. Hello. <laughs> Can you see them? Tell, them? tell them where you're going to sleep tonight. Are you going to sleep in your bed, in her side, or in the sukkah? Lila, tell them. Yeah, I feel like your daughter sukkah. keeps more mixed up than I do. Yeah, uh, it's quite intimidating. They're going to come you... oh. shank me, innit? Oh. What, what were you calling it? She was calling the sukkah the couscous. <laughs> She's now progressed into call. Okay, I'm not allowed to say that. Okay, guys, I'm going to go inside now because the kids are going to bed. Um, Hopefully, I don't lose reception in the middle um, from the Wi-Fi. One Libin. second. Kids, you want to Libin. say goodnight to the Oh, Nakami, you can come and say as well. Goodnight. Good Goodnight. Libin, you're swimming. Lila Tom. Good night. Lila Good Tom. Good night. Okay, let me move. <laughs> What's up, Zach? We're not doing a key You're issue. swimming. Okay, one second. Hopefully, yeah. I don't lose reception. <laughs> can you open the door so I can go straight in? I don't want to lose signal. Okay, one second. Uh, uh. How's everyone doing? Lovely. Lovely. You'll see. How you doing, Yako? Hi, guys. Sorry. Good. I actually miss you, January. Uh, January 8th. <laughs> all right guys i'm gonna continue okay okay all right so <laughs> now in the uh, second part a bit underneath the title nasa nishma i have no very nasa sorry bit bonut mami ka dafka me koach el kana niskav shem zod yesh er hadil lechol ma shanu kortim umivlim ben when i understand the laws of a country which i disagree with but i understand them it's a lot different from understanding the laws of a country I identify with. I understand that Israel, which is a country I agree with, has laws about who have to go to the army or not, and how long you have to serve. And due to the fact that I respect this state to begin with, I then am going to understand the laws in a different way. However, if it's a country which I am against, Let's say we won't go to Nazi Germany. We'll talk about Germany in the First World War. Obviously, there's no. We didn't agree with Germans, Germany's First World War um, urge to take over Europe, okay? As they wanted to. Forget about anti Semitism, okay? I then would look at the German laws of conscription and say, Ma, ma kesha. This is the same with um, La Hav deal with Judaism, okay? Judaism is, Naseh is, I first understand the Kodesh Baruch Hu, and then when I come to understand the mitzvah differently, because it's the mitzvah of this incredibly in, intelligent being, who wants our interests at heart, who cares about us, who wants what's best for the world, is going to give us a completely and utterly different understanding of the Torah. It's going to elevate our understanding of what's going on. It's going to change how we perceive things. 
Um, and that's, that's the idea here. ראיה עמוקה זו איננה חונקת ומבטל אל כאן שמחשבתנו אדרבה בתוך הנעשה מגיע הנשמע. Sometimes, um, and I hope, I hope you don't mind me using, using example, um, if, if you do then I'm sorry. Um, no, of course not, Rav. Sometimes, I'm just scared. The issue with Rav Avadi, uh, Rav Avadi, uh, some people had an issue with him. He, some people felt from the religious people, um, circles that he came along and said, everyone has to rule like me, like my understanding of what Shulchan Aruch says. You can eat gelatin, you can eat gelatin. Right. He says you can eat gelatin, as did Rav Bakshi, as did Rav Amar, Rav Mordechaliyahu and Rav Bakshi Doron disagreed. Okay, the different Sephardi chief rabbis. But the point is, forget about that. Um, there were different shitot out there. And he came along and said, Kulam Achidut, right? This Achidut, which is unity. And Achidut, with a Yud in the middle, is conformity. Everyone has conform. And sometimes when Sfardim come to Ashkenazi lands, they feel that there's some pressure to conform to Ashkenazim. And then it's, it's Ashkenazi's fault for not giving a space for the Sfardim to express themselves. Um, and there's this thing of, I don't want to conform. This is my sheet. I have my own sheet. I have my own thing. Okay. The Torah is not about you not being able to ask questions. It's not about us having to shut our mouths. Um, it's a, however, uh, however, about us trying to understand the Torah. The Torah wants us. God wants us. Right. I say Torah, God and the Torah is one. Right. As the Zohar says. Um, we're one. So the Torah and God. God is the Torah and God is the same thing. Want us to what? He wants us to connect to Him and use our mind. God is not interested in turning us into mindless robots. He wants us to be those weird guys who connect more to mitzvot and in um, in Kiddush Levana jump up and down more than the other uh, guy to his left or to his right. He wants to bring our own expression into the mitzvot, but it has to come from a place first of uh, nase. Of I'm doing it because I'm doing it because God wants me to do it, not because I understand. And only then can I add my self-expression. Obviously, it has to be a self-expression which is within the um, the realms of halacha. Um, meaning, you daven shachar in the morning. You can't daven shachar in the afternoon. I won't get into discussion about with Yossi when's the last time for shachar. But um, Yossi agrees with me, and all all sitting apart from one very small branch believes you have to daven shachar in the morning and minach in the afternoon and arvit at night, okay? There's no room for self-expression in that degree that I just walk up and bring up my siddur and write my own siddur, okay? The fact that in the reform or conservative movements, uh, they turned, uh, added into the Shema Nasheri, Elokeinu Velokei Avotainu Elokei Avram, Elokei Yitzchak Velokei Yaakov, Elokei Sarah, Elokei Rivka, Elokei Rachel, Elokei Leah, is a nice idea, but the Chazal, for whatever reason, can discuss why they came up with that. I tend to believe that the Chazal, the people who authored the <coughs> Siddur, are not um, chauvinistic pigs as they perceive them. You are allowed to, however, add self expression. And that's what the self expression, like I said, has to come from a Nase point of view. Like, I am doing it because God wants me to do it. God is amazing. It's a hard thing to get to to begin with. God's amazing. Look at all the history. I'm not trying to now add Emunah questions, but we've had a, a troubling history as a Jewish people. And if you th if you are not naive, and if you don't just ignore these things, sometimes it can raise questions. Um, it can raise some theological questions. But we have to believe Nase. God's amazing and we do what he wants. Okay, last paragraph. Raya Amuka. Actually, frees us. Sometimes we think that the Torah enslaves us, right? We say, um, it says the mitzvot, the Ten Commandments were charot al ruchot. They were engraven on the um, tablets. And the Midrashim say, don't read, read 
engraved, read free, Gerut Melashon Freedom, right? Um, and the question is, what do you mean? What? The Torah frees me. I now can't do 39 Melachas and all the um, subcategories on, on Shabbat. Where's the freedom? On Sukkot, Cholamoid, the mitzvot of Cholamoid, it restricts me again. Yom Tov, where's it? I can't eat what I want. I can't drink what I want. I can't wake up when I want, meaning I have to get up by a certain time to daven. I can't be in the same room with who I want. Right? I can't touch who I want. Right? There's lots and lots of restrictions. Where's the freedom? So the freedom is in the fact, did someone ask a question? No. The freedom is in the fact that the Torah enables us actually to free our mind. We are, we use a human mind. We have a human intellect. When we understand the Torah is given by God, it actually enables us to free ourselves and think on a much higher and spiritual level. We elevate ourselves. We go on to some higher pedestal of thought. And that's why the Torah actually frees us. When the Torah says, love God, when the Torah says, keep Shabbat, it's not saying, keep a Sunday. And, right, I don't know if any of you have grandparents of that age in Britain, but shops were, didn't, weren't allowed to open on Sundays back in the day. Like uh, 60 years ago, yeah. shops were allowed Yeah, to you're open right. On what? <clears throat> yeah, it's true. Thank you. Um, right, so they were limited, okay? There was secularism. Now secularism coming, now everything is allowed to be open on Sundays. Um, almost everything is allowed to be open on Sundays. That is Not before 12 o'clock. Pardon? Not before 12 o'clock. Right. Or 11.30. Right, there's still some rules. Um, why am I bringing that? Because that's not what Shabbat is. Shabbat's on a higher level. Shabbat's not thinking, oh, I need a rest, so let's make an, a, a day of rest. God's saying, so we now have to think, okay, I am resting, not in a physical um, way alone, not in a physical way alone. I'm resting in a godly, spiritual way. It elevates me to be expected to think on much higher levels than my human mind. So even though at first glance, even though at first glance the Torah restricts, actually frees me from my human mind and elevates me to think on a lot more, a much more of a spiritual level, which is why the Kuzaris teaches us that Jews are able to get are born with an ability to get Navua and non-Jews are not born with that ability because we are free to think on a high level because God has ordered us to think on a high level. Since we're ordered to think on a high level, we have more mitzvot which take us up to a new level we are therefore freed from the restrictions of the physical and become more godly. So the Torah may sometimes on a superficial level feel very, very enslaving. However, it's actually quite the opposite. We just have to think deeply about it and understand it's like that. Um, okay, one second. We'll do a little bit more. Okay, no, just need to zoom out. Okay, you can you guys can still see the screen, right? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, move that out of the way. Yeah. Okay, so many of you guys may have unfortunately been in schools where you were told that you weren't allowed to ask questions. I think in, ju in general, Jewish education has moved on and you are allowed to ask questions uh, in most Jewish um, cultures, meaning Without speaking badly, I'm not trying to speak badly about a whole community. You, you cut out a lot, Rav. I cut out? Alan, is that what you said? Yeah, for the last, like, a minute. You cut out for, like, a minute. Oh. Last thing I heard was about questions. Oh. Yeah, being okay. able to ask okay, questions. Okay, so I'll try again. All right, so the, the next bit is about the, the uh, how we relate to questions. And many of you guys may have been in schools which encourage questions. Um, some of you, many of you may have actually been in schools where questions were not encouraged at all and you were told to stay in a box and not ask any questions. Judaism does encourage asking questions. Um, one of the reasons why, in my honest opinion, why many Haredim go off the deck if they just walk out of their daladamot, uh, out of their spiritual ghetto is because they've never asked the questions and therefore never got answers. The Kuzari, which I don't have a copy to pull out 
and show you what the Kuzari is. You guys, I think most of you already know. The Kuzari is a book which used to be like, um, what's it called? Like, um, here, not accepted. Here, like, Kuzari. Not, right, the Kuzari used to be a book which wasn't really learned by Haredim because it was very philosophical and very, very far reaching in trying to understand Judaism. And that's traditionally not what that Sibur were doing. They were working on uh, on, 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 on simple belief, on, on, on not looking deeply into Judaism. And that's not the, the now the, even the approach in Haredim, more Haredim are asking questions. And when they do ask questions within their community, they get answers. But often they are shut down and don't get answers. That's why they often, some of them, not often, go off the derech. Um, so we obviously encourage asking questions as well. Hopefully we can give answers to them. So now these are questions about to fill out. Where should questions about to fill out? Okay. So now we're going to read a little bit from this. We have many questions to clarify. We want to contemplate and understand it. Yeah, I, I just muted you because you, I don't know what's going on, Yaakov, okay? Um, so, just like the Midrash says, we all learn from a mistake, our so. mothers, no problem, in, in our mother's wombs, uh, with the angel, or in Shemaim, however you want to understand it. The deeper message of that is that we are all deeply connected to every single thing. Any question that you have right now, you already knew the answer to when you were in Shemaim. And therefore, when I, if I internalize that, that I actually, all the mitzvot are re relevant to me because God has implanted within me that neshama, which is deeply connected to God, is inherently co connected to God. And when I ask these questions, those questions are coming from a place of deep connection with mitzvot, a deep burning connection with God. And therefore, I have kavod. I have respect for those mitzvot and I'm not coming to tear apart the Torah. I'm not coming to a lecture like with when lefties go to Ben Shapiro lectures just to uh, not to actually understand what he wants. They come with like a list of like, I don't agree with everything Ben Shapiro says, but I do like a lot of what he says. He like, he will, he will be giving a pro-life talk. He's an extremist. Okay. When he gives like a, um, an anti-abortion talk, you'll have some lefties come to it and bring like the most extreme case Instead of like bringing a normal case, so like a woman who was raped and got pregnant from the rape, and okay, I'm not saying what the halacha is, I'm not, I'm not going into that. But th that woman who are, or man who asked that question isn't really coming to discuss. He or she is just coming to attack. So if we go back to what we're actually talking about, here we're talking about if I understand deeply that God is interested in me then my questions are going to come from a different place completely. My questions are not going to come from a place of, I'm looking to attack Judaism, and that's it. Okay, so let's continue. God is interested in lifting us uh, up our lives to a, another type of life. It's like, living life spiritually for dummies. I don't, I don't know if they still have the series for dummies, like Windows for dummies, Microsoft Word for dummies, all these different things for, for dummies, like these guide, guide books. So Yeah, they have them. Okay, so great, wonderful. So the Torah is like living life on a spiritual level for dummies, okay? That's what God wants us to do. We are subjective. Many of us struggle to understand things object, uh, objectively. We come from, like, I'll talk, use myself for, uh, for an example. I grew up in a socialist country, right? Britain isn't socialist, but uh, it's more socialist than America, meaning it has free healthcare. There's all these different things. I grew up in a family, a working class family. Um, so I 
subjectively look on capitalism badly because that's how I was brought up. With time, I can objectively see now things differently. The Torah comes to free us from subjectivity and bring us to an objective point of view. It is subjectively a discussion whether we should have slaves or not. The Torah says not whether we should have, personally, meaning if there's an idea of slavery. Objectively, however, God said there is, there is an idea called slavery, how it works, all those details, go to the relevant places and learn the sources. Um, but objectively, it's correct. And the Torah comes to free us from subjectivity. I mean, we all brought up differently and we should have. We should enrich our lives with what we were brought, how we were brought up. However, when it comes to relating to the Torah, we should also be able to relate to the Torah in an objective way. If I was brought up in a left-wing society or even a very right-wing society and um, the Torah doesn't actually believe in that, then I need to find what the objective truth of the Torah is. And that's what the Torah is there. I'm going to say, Yadav Yodea et Agaza Amokaze, Sheikah Erkan Shalem, it's not who, Davka Biotan Hadachai Lokit. I'm going to have known and will always know that the Torah, the, the value of the Torah is the fact they are godly directions. Okay? Um, God is basically telling us, Tifne Smola, Tifne Yamina, Yasha, 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 Yamina Smola, third, third right. I don't know if you've ever asked directions from Israelis. They're known for giving really uh, directions in very uh, weird ways. But Yasha, 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 Yamina Smola, and you're, you're supposed to remember all of that. Um, the Torah, however, is like that. The Torah has so many misfought to bring us to a place where we are acting in a godly way in every single realm. The way we dress, the way we marry, the way we die, the way we go to the bathroom, the way we have relations, with everything. The way we date, the way we do every single thing, there is a godly guidance, okay? And we aren't supposed to, as Alan said, it says in the Torah, we're not supposed to just have... Um, the Torah, we're also supposed to have rabbis who can, uh, and Alan also said this, the rabbis, right? We need to have rabbis who are able to translate the Torah. Because if we just go by what's written in the Torah and the general, you know, feel of things, we're going to get lost. Because if we go just go with the general feel of things, we're going to end up doing halacha wrong. For instance, yeah, meat and milk. It's not written down in the Torah. The rabbi says, how's that, how's that also good? Pardon? How's just following like the rabbis blindly and just doing exactly what I said that's not really good either that's all like like you detrimental in a sense because you're not you're just doing it because they said there's no meaning there's no you're not you're no you should try and understand. I didn't say you didn't. I didn't say you shouldn't try and understand the reasons behind it try and understand the reasons but you should still be doing it because that's what the Torah is the simple thing is do it because the Torah says so how do you understand what the Torah says because you go to your local rabbi, you go to your personal rabbi and try and use him as the font of all knowledge, as the person who can tell you what the Torah means. Eventually, please God will all learn enough Torah to also be our own rabbis and not have to run to a rabbi every single time we have uh, every, uh, a small question, okay? Um, okay, but that, that comes with time. Um, okay, Anu Yodim Kiatov, Shanum, Alan, I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We understand true good is found in the Torah. We can receive good in this world, moral good, financial good. We can have a good life. But true good is found only in one source, and that's the Torah. We know that the world is prepared to bring out that good. God created the world, and he obviously, we talked about he's above time before, but he's been waiting. He's not really waiting because he's above time, but he's waiting for the world to realize its potential. And the, the world is working with God's help towards revealing that potential. That good will be expressed. Yes, it's good that UNICEF exists and help poor children, and it's good that the UN exists to help um, when they are actually helping, not making the situation worse, helping countries with famine, it's good that there's US aid and Israel aid, and all these things are good. However, true good 
is only through the Torah, meaning that doesn't mean you therefore close down UNICEF and USAID, but true good is only when it, when these things come through the Torah. Um, God has given us a lekach tov. He's given us this gift. We'll just finish the last paragraph. Anu chafetzim ba'adachel ukitchi kol kula letov lanu kol emim. There is no part of the Torah which is not for our benefit. I give an example, not for my life. A Cohen who who um, who um, whose wife has passed away. This happened here in Keshet. Um, a Cohen whose uh, wife passed away, um, and now he's older. He's like sixty something. He's now restricted to marry. Right, most sixty-year-old women are divorced. I mean, or married. So he obviously can't marry the, the, the married women and he can't marry the divorce because Kornim can't marry divorced women. And now he could turn around and say, I don't know why he says, I'm just talking about this case though. He could turn around and say, it's not for my own good. The Torah is messing me over. Now I'm going to die. Uh, maybe I might never meet, uh, meet another good, uh, another woman, I'm sorry, another wife, may never remarry and the Torah is out to get me. So deep down, even if we don't understand the Torah is there to better our lives. Even if it feels annoying that we have to wake up three, um, every day in Davin, even if it's annoying that once we're in, on our break, we then have to come back into the Beit Midrash at 3.30 for Mincha, even though it may be annoying that after a quick supper of 45 minutes after again come in Davin, it's actually for our own good. Every single thing in the Torah is for our own good. And when you understand that, when you internalize that, any question you have doesn't dissipate. It shouldn't disappear, but it's going to turn from an attacking question, a question of the Rasha, right? Not that you are Rasha for asking questions, that's fine. But a question of attacking Judaism to a question of the Chacham, of trying to deeply understand the Torah. Okay? Because you understand the Torah is for our good. We are always going to struggle with the point I just said. We are never always, we are always going to struggle to understand how the Torah is actually good for us on, on some level because we have a human mind, we have a human intellect, and therefore don't perceive everything God has taught, taught us and everything God has given us. And as, as it's like that, we all struggle. And our job is to, as far as we can, get over that, past that level of misunderstanding and understand the Torah is the Tovlanu Koremim, to do good for us all days. And once I understand that, when we ask questions in Shurim, those questions are not going to come from um, the Kanteo to attack, to criticize. Like I said, they're going to come from, wow, this is an amazing Sefer. Uh, this is an amazing Torah. This is an amazing gift that Hashem has given us. And that gift is to do what's good for me. And even if it seems bad, I deep down have to understand that these mitzvot which are given to me are actually for my own good. And with that, we're going to move more close and close to actually to speak. I mean, this is officially a tefillah shir. Uh, we haven't spoken so much about tefillah yet. Eventually, the closer we get, the deeper we understand this, we're going to be able to understand tefillah a lot more. Because we're going to understand all the inyanim about tefillah. They're very easy to criticize, very easy to attack. Because it seems like we can't see the results. But once I understand it's a godly gift, a three times a day godly gift, four times a day for Tcholomod, of speaking to him, to get close to him, to change ourselves, and it's something which is good for me inherently, then all the questions I have dissipate, don't dissipate, I'm sorry, will turn from attacking questions to questions of trying to understand and trying to strengthen my relationship with Asha. On that note, um, before Ravarez is uh, Ravarez has joined us, um, does anyone have a question about the shoe? No. Okay, so I'm going to stop. Um, I'm going to stop recording.